A lot of times when it comes to undrafted rookie free agents, you'll hear a lot of fans ask the question, man, how did this guy go undrafted? I can't believe seven rounds came and went and nobody picked him. And sometimes it could be fans just trying to big up their favorite team or maybe big up one of their favorite players from college. But for Joe Evans from Iowa, defensive end slash outside linebacker, I was really, really confused on why he didn't get drafted when I watched film on him. One of the biggest things that stood out to me when I watched him was his effort. He does not give up on the play at all, even if he misreads it. He will steal that pursuit is there like crazy. And and that's one of my favorite things uh, about players is effort. Um, I know I always tell the story. Y'all probably tired of hearing me say it with Brandon Carr. When Ravens, they they signed Brandon Carr. And I know a lot of people like, man, that's the guy that made Odell Beckham Jr. famous. He is. But at the same time, um, the thing that stood out to me about him was his availability. That was big, too. But it was his effort. Uh, The the man just did not give up. and, And that made me love him. As a player for the Baltimore Ravens and Joe Evans, he has that crazy effort. Uh, Another thing with him, when he strikes, oh, he strikes. He strikes. He ain't no small stepper when it comes to making tackles, when it comes to making hits on the quarterback. Uh, And it's it's a beautiful thing to see. Also, uh, he is very, very good at open field tackling and he plays very, very smart football. And what I mean when I say smart football, I mean like when he's rushing the quarterback, uh, a lot of times guys can just, they could be getting so excited, in which we understand the defensive ends, their pass rushers, they can get so excited when they get into the quarterback, when they're chasing the quarterback, that, oh, I'm getting close, let me turn it up a notch. But a lot of times you saw when he would get close to the quarterback, he wouldn't over pursue the quarterback or overrun him like how it it happens to a lot of guys which is understandable because quarterbacks nowadays they are crazy athletic more than they've ever been and they'll make you miss (laughs) they'll make you miss in the backfield to make you look silly but one thing that I noticed about him is that he doesn't really over pursue and end up running past the quarterback too many times Uh, and again the that combined with the open field tackle that's a great open field tackling excuse me that's a great combination especially when it comes to bringing the ball carrier down whether it's the quarterback or not um he is physical not afraid to to get nasty not afraid obviously he he knows how to make some plays for himself but he's not afraid to do the dirty work for other people to eat as well so again seriously i I was wondering how did he go undrafted because when you look at the numbers, it makes you question stuff even more. Because look looking at the film, it made me question it. But then I was like, all right, maybe, looked at the film, looked at a couple of games and whatnot. All right, maybe he didn't produce or something like that. Maybe he didn't produce consistently. I, so then I looked at the stats and I'm like, really? That, how did he go undrafted? And we're about to get into the numbers in a bit. But before we do, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications on. Uh, and leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton. And, and again, I always thank y'all because y'all have been doing that like crazy recently. Uh, we are 127 subscribers away from 75,000. So appreciate y'all. If y'all been here for a little amount of time, thank you. If you've been here for a long amount of time, thank you. I, I seriously appreciate y'all and appreciate y'all supporting the channel like crazy. Now, um, back to Joe Evans. When we look at the stats, because again, that can be something that may throw teams off a bit. Uh, but this is crazy. So we, we're going to go through all five years because he was at Iowa for a while. Uh, so in 2019, so his freshman year, um, he only played in, in four games, but he got four tackles for a loss and four sacks. So that's like he played in four games. <laughs> He played in four games. I don't know if he got all of this in one game or maybe got in two games, but still, he didn't play much. But he played in four games, four tackles, four loss, and four sacks. So those tackles, four loss, were probably sacks. Anyway, um, so all right, all right, cool. The following year, played in five games, had two tackles, four loss, and one sack. All right, so they, he played in one more game, but then uh, his numbers dropped a bit. All right, cool, whatever. These next three years, this is what really got me questioning stuff. So in 2021, played in 14 games, uh, had seven tackles for a loss, which those were seven sacks that he got that year. So he got seven sacks that year. So, wow, okay. He played in a lot more games, produced a lot more. Makes sense, more opportunity. He took advantage of it. Following year, 
played in 13 games, so one less game, and he got six and a half sacks. So the production was about the same. He was a half sack short of his previous year, but still the production was there. So then this year, he played in 14 games, and he had nine and a half sacks. So the production increased, and you saw especially these past three years. To me, consistency is everything. When, when you're consistent as a player, or really just as a person in general, that says a lot more about if you, you get hot at this time and, oh, you go off, but then everything else is quiet. So, but him, his first couple of years, they were, they were not bad. They were solid. He played a little bit, but then he played more, and you saw the consistency. Seven sacks. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, seven sacks, then six and a half sacks, then nine and a half sacks. So what stage you like? What? How? How did he not get drafted? That's that's what is so weird to me. How did he even get didn't get drafted? Then is it because maybe he's a little undersized? Is that it? Because it says he, he's about six two. Well, this website has him listed at six two, about two fifty. So I mean, is is that it? But then again, he's he doesn't play small. But but you see you see linebackers around that size all the time. So I just. I don't know. I, I, I really did not understand why he went undrafted. Maybe y'all know something that I don't about him. Or clearly somebody does because he was an undrafted rookie free agent. But he's somebody that looks like he's ready. Like, again, the effort. When you really put your heart into it, it stands out like crazy. And that's him all day. Now, uh, with him being on the Baltimore Ravens, what kind of chance does he have to actually make the roster, what type of impact could he have with the Baltimore Ravens? Well, when you think about their outside linebackers, their edge guys, um, you have uh, Adafi away, obviously a lock to make the roster. Uh, you have Adisa Isaac, obviously a lock to make the roster. You have David Ajabo. Uh, he's a lock to make the roster. Question marks about his availability. We don't know when he'll be healthy. I would expect him to be healthy at the beginning of the season, though. But he's a lock to make the roster. You got Calvin Noy. He's obviously a lock to make the roster. You got Tavius Robinson. He's obviously a lock to make the roster. So I think that's, that's five guys that we went over thus far already. And then there's still Malik Ham, too. So you got Away, Ajabo, Calvinoy, uh, Isaac, Malik Ham. Um, I just feel like I, I miss. Oh, Latavius Robinson. So you got six guys right there. Yeah, wait a minute. Did I feel away? David Ajabo, Calvinoy, Isaac, Latavius Robinson, Malik. Yeah, you got six guys right there. My apologies. I had to just recount it again. I feel like I still mess it up. But you, you got. So that's a lot there. That's a lot there. Um. I think for him to make the roster, one of the obviously depends on other people's help. For him, he he could try to really push Malik Ham, but the Baltimore Ravens they really like Malik Ham a lot. Um, but he could try to push him. But special teams, special teams, because as far as playing time, it would be extremely hard for him to get playing time uh, over even mixed in with all those other guys, those guys who are locks to make the roster. It would be very very hard for him there. Um, but for, he would just really have to crush it on special teams. Does he play special teams? I don't know. But, I mean, <laughs> if you, it's John Harbaugh's team, and if you're trying to make the roster, you better play some special teams, buddy. So that would be really the only way that I could see it, um, just because that's a spot where, while there are a lot of question marks, because it's more question marks than answers at edge at defensive and outside linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens right now while there's a lot of question marks so that could be a way he could sneak in there if he really went like really went crazy in the preseason somebody in the comment section yesterday they made a really really good point about these undrafted rookie free agents that nowadays it's even tougher for them to make rosters with there being three preseason games instead of four and I was like oh my goodness that is such a great point because remember uh, the first three preseason games, the starters, they usually play a bit in each one. They might play like a drive in the first preseason game, uh, two drives in the second preseason game. They may play until halftime in the third preseason game. Then that fourth preseason game, they be, okay, we're good here. We're, we're done. That's a wrap. Okay, that, that, that's it, folks. We're finished. And then that fourth preseason game would be all for rookies, all for undrafted guys, just their last shot to really put on a show for the franchise. But now that's gone. 
that's gone. So their opportunities are extremely limited, extremely limited. So it makes it that much harder. So as far as for Joe Evans, um, realistic shot at making a roster, again, with all the question marks that the Ravens have uh, at outside linebacker and edge, that there's a shot. It's, it's a small shot, but there's still a shot nonetheless. Uh, but I think he would have a much – not easier time, but he would have a, a much uh, a higher chance of making the practice squad uh, than the active roster. But again, it's one of those things where you, you start showing out early. And, and again, if he shows that effort in the mini camp and training camp and all that stuff, if he shows that effort there uh, and then it shows on film too, hopefully he can make the decision really hard for the Baltimore Ravens front office.